Uh, thank you, Madam Secretary. Um, good morning, uh, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. My name is Tamir Israel, and I'm staff lawyer with CIPIC, the Can Samuelson Glushko Canadian Internet Policy and Public Interest Clinic. Um, and here with me today is Steve Anderson, who is the executive director of OpenMedia.ca. I just wanted to thank you for giving us the opportunity to come here today to participate in this proceeding. Um, it touches on issues that are very important to OpenMedia.ca and to CIPIC, so we're grateful for the opportunity. Um, to start off this morning, Steve is going to talk a bit um, about some of our concerns that are raised by this proceeding, and I will address some of the questions uh, you've put to us in your commission letter um, last week in more detail. Thank you for having me and for holding this important hearing. Um, I'm here in the interests of uh, perhaps the largest lobby in the country, the Canadian public. Over the last few months, 491,000 people, Canadians, have signed Open Media's Stop the Meter petition. Of those, nearly 100,000 followed up and sent submissions in for this hearing. As, as you know, that is an unprecedented level of citizen engagement for a telecom issue. The public cares, the public is watching, and they're depending on you to make the right, the right choices. Acting on behalf of Canadians, Open Media and CIPIC have put forward a submission that is deeply fact-based, but also informed by these hundreds of thousands of Canadians, from policy experts, small business owners, to independent ISPs, to people with disabilities just trying to scrape by. Their concerns are valid, and there is clear evidence to back them up. Based on research and clear evidence, the outcome of this hearing should be a wholesale pricing regime that is cost-based, transparency-based, and fact-based. Firstly, cost-based so that Canadians have a real choice for Internet access, where an independent ISP is with pricing autonomy, offer competing business models, serving as alternatives to incumbent telecoms that currently dominate. Cost-based to enable competition and thus lower prices. Cost-based because we cannot afford to allow a few companies to stifle competition and impose a stranglehold on critical Internet access markets. Secondly, the outcome of this hearing must be transparency-based because it's crucial we have a market based on actual costs, not inflated numbers. We've seen several pricing schemes floated by Bell, the most recent being $0.19 cents per gigabyte, down from the previous ask of up to $2.50 per gigabyte. We clearly need to have some kind of mechanism in place that shows us the actual costs for telecom companies, whether it be through public disclosure and, and public scrutiny or independent costing audits. And lastly, the outcome of this hearing must be fact-based. If we're going to move forward in a positive direction, and I, and I really think we can, we need to operate based on the actual reality before us. We can no longer allow decisions to be clouded by mischaracterizations of industry realities. Fact one, we are simply not facing a bandwidth crisis or an explosion or anything like that. Gro growth rate rates have actually decreased in recent years, slowing to about, uh, uh, sl slowing to about 40 percent per year. Big Telecom's investment in network infrastructure in Canada as a percentage of revenue, this is fact two, has failed to keep pace with our OACD counterparts. Fact three, ISPs can deal with, with demand through network investment, as we saw yesterday by, by um, the testimony by uh, TELUS. They, they seem to be doing fine with network investment. We don't need meter pricing to deter customers from using the Internet. Cutting-edge business models and from cloud computing to real-time interactive media to peer-to-peer -peer applications require more Internet usage, not less. We should not be deterring Canadians from using more Internet. As the recent OpenMedia.ca report, Casting an Open Internet, makes clear, Canada is falling behind on several key Internet metrics when compared to our OACD counterparts, most strikingly in price. The thing Canada does lead on is capping Internet usage, and that's something none of us should be proud of. In countries like Japan, the UK, Sweden, and Chile, open access policies, including those that provide independent ISP pricing model autonomy, play a critical role. Open access policies, market choice, and mechanisms to ensure ISP transparency are pushing these countries ahead of Canada in telecom performance. Functional marketplaces meet demand by increasing supply, not by squashing demand and seeing who can gouge Canadians the most. It is not okay for big telecom companies to invest less of their revenue than their global peers and then claim they need to gouge Canadians to make up for this waning investment. 
to do so would be to reward failure. The impact of this approach on Canadians is real and sometimes severe. For example, listen to the submission from Vince Dwyer, and, and I quote, I, I am a disabled father of seven, and a metered internet is unfair for parents of multiple children of school age. They all use the internet as a learning tool, and it is mandatory for some of the classes. I have seven children, and I get a disability check of, of $1,300 a month. I'm barely scraping by as it is. Please stop the metered internet as lower income families suffer and our children will suffer. The story is of real Canadians, not the narrow self-serving narrative of big telecom that the commission should listen to. I've heard from photographers, graphic designers, video makers who are being priced out of their craft. I've spoken to businesses that are unable to invest in online services. For example, Andrew Moore Crispin wrote to you, I work at Butterscotch.com, a division of Two Cows. Our online video network that focuses on helping people do more with the technology they own with video tutorials and helpful how-tos would not be viable in a climate where Internet users are worried about exceeding draconian and artificially low bandwidth caps. There's also Andrew Sinclair who wrote, Dear CRTC, I'm an independent music producer and I depend on the Internet for my livelihood. The arts, media, and technology is one of the new ways for Canadian culture to thrive. The focus should not be on finding ways to make Internet costs more, but on finding ways to make it faster and more accessible. I believe the CRTC should reverse its previous UBB rulings and allow independent ISPs to choose their own customer billing solutions. In short, it's time to, to listen to Canadians. And Canadians are not just vocal, they're extremely well-informed, as, as I'm sure you've realized through the, the consumer testimony already. I, I invite you all to take a look at Open Media's Facebook page. We have over 60,000 active contributors. With this page and social media in general, the, the Commission has a new and unprecedented opportunity to listen to Canadians who are remarkably well-informed about this issue. What ties everything I've heard from Canadians on this issue together is what accounts for the largest citizens' movement in the country right now. That's the value of opportunity. The Internet represents opportunity. Opportuning, opportunity for a meaningful and rewarding job. Opportunity for independence and autonomy. Opportunity for a dynamic economy. The pro-Internet community and Canadians writ large are calling on this commission to throw open the gates of opportunity that the Internet can provide on both a personal and a national level. You've heard some facts from me. You'll hear more from my colleague here. The unprecedented 100,000 Canadians that asked you to enable pricing choice and the 491,000 that asked you to stop the meter await your decision based on these clear facts. I trust the Commission will make the right choice. Thank you.